Hello guys, welcome back to the Big Intentions podcast. I am in such a good podcasting mood today because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately and I just love the energy surrounding a podcast. It's so fun. Also, if you see this big like fluffy thing, it's my love sack in the corner of my room. Um, but if you're watching this, you might see it, whatever. But if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, great little transition here. Go ahead, leave a five-star rating and review. Literally, we'll love you guys. Leave me one. I'll read them. I will, like, DM me if you do it. Like, I want to know. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and comment what your favorite fall item right now is like what's your fall obsession because i'm really getting into fall i'm literally wearing a, a flannel right now also i had spindrift on the last podcast um that's like my current drink fixation so i always have an ongoing fixation like there's always something new that i'm like fixating on like for a while it was these s gel pens like i i don't know maybe we could do a like fixation podcast and i could go through the fixations of my life um current fixations cast fixations whatever anyways i'm a big journaling girly these days this one is like looking really ratchet because i spilled sunscreen on it once but all the pages are still intact they just look a little weird anyways so i am going to be talking to you guys today about unlocking your potential which i'm really excited about i have like a few pages of like stuff i'm really into writing out my podcast script because it just feels more authentic it feels more real and like i really like going from brain to paper like something about that process just really does it for me so anyways um, let's just jump right into the segment. So I'm going to be jumping into living out loud, which if you're new to the podcast, this is just a segment where I catch you guys up on my life, what's going on, all of my like current favorites or recommendations, what I'm up to, that kind of thing. So just jumping right in. I had a super relaxing weekend. It was my boyfriend, Spencer. It was his birthday this past weekend. He's 26. So we were celebrating him. Um, we went to Denver a couple weekends ago, but this past weekend it was like his actual birthday on Saturday. So we were just like still celebrating, but not like on an, as grand of a scale. So anyways, um, I, Friday I had a themed class, which was my first theme class. I'm a spin instructor at Cycle Bar and my first class that like they do themes that spin so my first theme was the pregame is better than the party and it was all like hip-hop rap music that i played which is so fun and like so me and so i had a really fun time making that playlist the, the class was super fun and then we went to dallas for dinner or i went into dallas my boyfriend lives in dallas i'm in the burbs it's a whole thing so anyways basically long distance you know what i mean and so um basically we went so this is what was so crazy though before we like went out to dinner like got to his apartment and like the power kept going off and it wasn't storming or anything and i was like why is your power off like i don't understand it's because it was so hot in texas and that's a concern and that was a sign to me like i felt like god was like look this is literally a sign like i'm turning the lights on and off for you like flashing lights like don't you think that's concerning that it's so hot in texas like what are you doing in texas it's so freaking hot I was like, yeah, I know. Like, this is crazy. So, anyways, we went to Thai food, dinner, whatever, Friday night, um, which was fun. And then we were watching this show. I only watched one episode. I can only watch Netflix when I'm at his house or his apartment because, like, I don't have Netflix here. So, anyways, we were watching the docu-series, like, Living to 100. I don't know what it's called, but look it up. You'll, it's popular right now, I think. So anyways, that like got me on like a, ooh, you know, I'm sitting in the floor now. If you, well, I always sit on the floor for my podcast, but that was like one of the things in the first episode was like these people like who are really old and can live to 100, they like sit on the floor and get up and down and balance. And anyways, so here I am on the floor. Not that that matters. That's so irrelevant. But anyways, you know, this is a chatty, feeling chatty. I feel really feel like i haven't talked to anybody today so you know this is my human interaction with literally no humans present so saturday was spencer's birthday so we started off and went to the gym we got starbucks obsessed with this pumpkin drink like i made a pumpkin drink at home today and tried to replicate a pumpkin drink it's just not the same 
But anyways, I digress. So we also went to the driving range and I like, I like going to the driving range, but not in Texas and not in any warm month because I just really need to stop like giving crap, Te giving Texas crap. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I'm done. I'm over it. Okay. So anyways, we went to the driving range, but I was just reading at the driving range because I'm reading the fourth wing, which I'm obsessed with this book. Like I just can't wait to get done with my stuff, like whatever I'm doing so I can read because I'm just like really into this book and I like, need to know what happens. Like don't try to make plans with me because I'm not that anybody is, but like I'm just so into this book. So anyways, um we did that then we went to dinner we got dinner at blue sushi which is um yeah sushi obviously and it was good we got like these different rolls like i just like sushi i like communal sharing family style places but only with two people because if you get more than like two or three people in there doing that we saw this in Denver. This was like a whole thing. People, okay, let's say you're like with your friends, like five friends, and you go to a place that has small plates or like family style sharing, and like you have to advocate for yourself. Like at the beginning, you sit down, you've been scoping out the menu, you're like, yeah, we should definitely get that bolognese. Like, d oh yeah, I heard it's like so good. And you're like, you're the one like really wants it. Like you have to advocate for yourself. If you want something to be ordered for the table kind of deal and then we were like talking about this concept so no i'm really not trying to go to a place where we're sharing the only way i'm sharing is there's two of us and we are sharing like i honestly don't even like sharing appetizers you just never get what you want you never get as much as you want if they sit your item down at the other end of the table you're screwed it's just like this whole battle so i'm ordering for myself if it's just me and one other person sharing, I love to do it that way because then I get a little bit of everything, but no more than that. So this concept was just like cracking me up that we were like literally the friends. We were like, I love eavesdropping. I love people watching. It's honestly a problem though because like then you just don't even have your own conversation at the restaurant. We were just like eavesdropping on those people. Like I knew this whole girl's life story. She was like on her come up era, like, Honestly, it was cracking me up. She was like, I've had to pay for everything since I was 18. This is my first time. But, and she was just going on and on. And her friends, they were like, bro, we've heard this story like so many times. You could kind of tell. And she was like dominating the conversation, which is just always so interesting. Um, it, it was just really funny. So anyways, I just love people watching. All of that to say, yeah, we got blue sushi. I don't know how I got there, but we're back Saturday, blue sushi for dinner. We literally had a 5.30 p.m. dinner reservation, not because nothing else was available, because that's what we chose. And why, you might ask? I really don't know, besides it just felt right. We're in our grandma eras down here, and it just felt good. So then we went and got ice cream at this place called Bolino. I'm trying to get better at like sharing the names and stuff so if you guys want it this was like gelato um and they had vegan like non-dairy options that weren't just like fruity options like they had a hazelnut and a chocolate and i got a waffle cone and i was living my ice cream dream dairy free because it's really tough to go into an ice cream shop with you're dating someone who is obsessed with ice cream like i love ice cream too but i just physically can't have it like is not good for me like it hurts it hurts physically hurts me to eat ice cream so like i'm not doing that to myself anymore like i do sometimes but like i don't need to do that so anyways i was like okay yeah you know what they have dairy free option like i want that like if i can't do that like we have to go get me a cookie somewhere like we have to compromise but anyways that was our saturday which was super fun and then uh, Sunday football is back. We went to church. We did the football, like, you know, chilling on the couch watching football. I'm reading my Kindle. Perfect Sunday. Perfect setup. So relaxing. I just, it's so comforting to me when football is on in the background. I'm just, like, taken back to my childhood. Like, oh my gosh. It's just, like, so cozy. And then, also, I did make for dinner that night grilled cheese and just like literally Campbell's soup microwaved it but grilled cheese is still a struggle for me I still don't feel like I always do that one right but 
Anyways, I made grilled cheese and that's so nostalgic for me because my dad would like cook on Sunday nights after like we would go to church and he would make us grilled cheese. And like that would be like, that was just a signal as like the end of the weekend, like school starting tomorrow. I don't know. It was just like, that's really like every Sunday. I feel like we'd have grilled cheese. Maybe not every Sunday, but it just felt like that. And that's like so nostalgic for me to have grilled cheese now. And I still am like, I don't really know how to make grilled cheese, even though I know it's not that hard. Anyways, so all of that to say, super chill weekend. Really just like relaxing after a lot of travel and more travel coming up, which I'm excited for, but I'll get into that whenever I'm back from those trips. I'll deep dive on those. So let's just move on into the next segment, which is intentional living. So my intention for this week is early bedtimes and early wake ups. And I have been doing that. I Last night I was in bed. Um, well, I was in my room, red lights on, but I was in my love sack, which I'm like trying to use it more because you know, I need to. So I was reading in my love sack, red lights on 8 p.m. I'd already had dinner. Like I was chilling. Perfect setup. Then I probably read for like an, a good hour. Then got lo I'm going to be honest. I got lost in a little TikTok spiral because Spence sent me a TikTok, which it's like, you would think you could just look at that and be done. No, it sent me in a little spiral. I was watching them for too long. So whatever, but I was like asleep by like 10, 15, 10, 30, which was good for me. Um, I love that pipeline. I was waking up this morning early at 6 a.m. journaling because I'm really trying to get into like journaling and uh, my like devotions. I like to do that before I go to the gym because I just feel like it sets the tone. But if I can't, then I if I'm rushed, I'll just go straight to the gym. But that's kind of the pipeline there. Um, yeah, I already went to the gym today, which it feels like literally woke up at six, but you feel like you have your whole day. I'm like, oh crap, I already went to the gym. Like I totally forgot about that because it was the first thing I did. But anyways, so now I'm like resting, I'm relaxing. Like it's, it's a good day. It's chill. So anyways, the, that's like my thing is like trying to just stay on that routine because Friday I'm teaching my first 6 a.m spin class like I'm just subbing like I don't think this is gonna be a regular thing but that is like you know that means you have to wake up at like 4 30 probably you know that's a lot so and I'm teaching twice that day so that would be my first time like double no that's not even my first time doubling because I doubled oh my gosh anyways all of these like first times you know what I mean so fun but anyways Let's just move on. That's my intention, just to wake up early so and go to bed early, which I love. Grandma era, like I said. So moving on into our next um, segment, which is quotes to live by. No, it's words to live by. Why did I write quotes to live by? It's words to live by. Me forgetting my own brand. No, but I'm trying to pull it up because I found this on Pinterest and then I like screenshotted it because it was too long to rewrite. So it's unlocking your potential. So it goes like this. Give yourself permission to access your ideal self now. That's not it. It keeps going. The better version of yourself that lives in your mind, the person who speaks with poise, walks with confidence, and travels with liberation, or the person whose career is successful, relationships are healthy, and health is flourishing, is no different than the you right now. The person you want to be is the same person who's breathing in and whose steps in life you're partaking in right in this moment. The only difference between them are you, uh, the only difference between them and you are their mindsets and their habits and their beliefs. It's in the way they think, their daily practices and the words and the words they tell themselves. How liberating is that? The person you want to be isn't that far off and becoming them isn't some intimidating threshold that feels far out of reach. Instead, that person is accessible to you and at any moment you can choose to welcome them. By shifting your mindset and embodying that person, you can unlock their being and you can become the better you now. Boom, mic drop. What you guys think about that? Unlocking your potential. It really leads us into the topic of today's episode, which is, you know, by the title of the video, Unlocking Your Potential. So 
give yourself permission to access your ideal self now and like thinking about that statement and realizing you are already that person like you are her you are them like that is who you are and it's a matter of your mindsets habits and beliefs like that's the only thing that separates you from them and the accessibility that we have to our potential it really is crazy to think about how accessible that is and i think sometimes that can put like a little bit more like i don't know it just it just is way more attainable when you look at it like that and so all it takes is a shift and looking and locking in to unlock your potential i feel like i'm about to sneeze so let's start with the mindset around potential and really like the first step in becoming that ideal version of yourself is your mindset so your mind your mind does exactly specifically what it thinks you want it to do it always does what it thinks is in your very best interest if you haven't got what you want but you've got behaviors you don't want you are not collaborating properly with your mind so i saw this on a tiktok like this tiktok about unlocking your potential and so that like kind of breakdown of the mind and so the power of your thoughts is really what it comes down to with your mindset and understanding that power and what you believe to be true of yourself and this kind of ties back into beliefs and deter how de beliefs determine your destiny and how it really starts at that granular level and how your beliefs and your thoughts all of this stuff like kind of accumulates and adds up and compounds and makes your destiny or your reality like what it is based on what you believe and so i did an episode on this previously about thinking um positively and writing down your dreams and visualizing them is the start to a mindset shift and so i think it's i've done lots of podcast episodes on previously one the beliefs determining determining your destiny and i can link that below but also just like perspective shift and all this is kind of like intertwined and ultimately it kind of all compounds into becoming the highest version of yourself setting big, big intentions you know becoming your ideal self but really analyzing your thoughts and identifying your limiting beliefs is key to your mindset shift and really setting the groundwork for unlocking your potential starts with your mindset and your thoughts and your beliefs and so really if you want to kind of understand where you're at and do like a check-in really just analyzing you know the way that you think about things writing them down and identifying any limiting beliefs that you have and i think that's like a good place to start so the next part of um that like quote or whatever about your mind about the behaviors so do your behaviors align with the life you want so just scrolling on your phone like i mentioned i did on tiktok does that help me you know or lead me to become the established content creator in the space or does that make me a better person by doing that and like no obviously no it doesn't and am i the kind of thinking of this as like am i the consumer or i am i the creator and aligning my behaviors with my ideal lifestyle so one you have to get clear on your ideal lifestyle if you want to become this higher version of yourself you need to be clear on what that version of yourself looks like and so i like to do the journaling practice or exercise of writing down the highest self passage and basically you could do it like day in the lifestyle or just however you want to do it and set it up but really getting specific it really helps you to kind of gather the appropriate information in order to set your life up now so that you can basically set up the systems and things for becoming the higher version of yourself so you know starting small with the habits and routines for example my ideal self is creative i put thought into the content i create i pour all my creative efforts into my work my creativity inspires others i create compelling content that i share online okay so like i would be writing this in my journal my highest self passage i would be writing like the kind of person i am the kinds of things i do what my home looks like just really a big like visualization of your life and getting like really nitty gritty with it 
And then after writing that, looking back and saying, how do I get to this point? So right now I'm focusing on deep work when it comes to this creative scenario, that example that I'm giving you. So I sit down with no distractions, my coffee, and I curate an environment for creativity. I put on a like lo-fi beats playlist on Spotify. I'm lighting a candle. I'm putting my phone on D and D. I grab my notebook and pen and I get to work on the deep work. And so I'm channeling my inner creative. I'm doing the things the way my ideal self would do these things. So I kind of created this ideal version of myself over here. And then I went back and said, how does, how do I get to that point? So let's say I want to be a successful content creator. Okay. So that means I have to sit down and edit my videos. I have to storyboard or like concept video ideas. So in order to do those things, I need to be like in this deep focus, like deep work mindset. So how do I get to the deep work mindset? Okay. I'm going to do what I said where I'm like sitting, setting the mood, curating a vibe, putting on a certain playlist. Like I'm getting really granular with like what I'm going to do in order to like fulfill these things that leads me to the highest self. So I hope that's like kind of a good example and picture for you guys of what I mean when I'm saying like, yes, I'm visualizing it first and then I'm actually, which kind of leads into the next part of like how to unlock your potential. But basically set, saying this is how I get to that version of myself. Th like these are the kind of things that my highest self would be doing now. Like I can do these things now. My highest self, it's like I don't want to wait for that person to just like appear and like somehow magically like become her. No, I'm doing the things that my highest self would do now. And that's how you become the highest version of yourself. So this establishes and communicates to your brain that you are the type of person who is creative and has creativity. And this is another great way to build self-confidence. If I'm establishing a routine around this and my brain is recognizing this pattern and understands that this is a part of me, like this is who I am, and I'm somebody who shows up for myself and I'm consistently doing this thing, it's going to start to believe and it's like going to rewire in there and do all the brain things and be like, oh, like, yeah, like that's a creative person because I'm doing these things that is leading me to become this highest version of myself. So that's kind of like the baseline for um, mindset, I would say, is like the visualization, analyzing your thoughts, reframing your thoughts, kind of going back to that perspective shift that I talked about last week. So another part of this is your mind is hardwired to move towards pleasure and not pain. So this idea has been, sorry, I just like want to make sure I'm always like paranoid, like my thing is going to stop recording. So this is an idea that has been showing up in my life lately. And I've heard a lot about this, um, like on podcasts or just, I don't know, like people talking about it, basically discipline. So we've heard the saying, like all good things in life are worth working for, like hard work pays off all good things, like take time, whatever that whole sentiment. And I really do believe this because one, just like a lot of experiences in my life that I've kind of, um, experienced, like the good things are worth waiting for. But I, I really think if it's worth struggling for, that means you're truly passionate about it. So keeping this in mind when you don't want to go for the work, like you don't want to go to that workout or you don't want to, um, do something hard, but realizing that good things, you know, you're naturally inclined to move towards pleasure and not pain and really trying to like course correct and navigate to the pain and through the pain because that leads you to the other side, which is success and will ultimately grow and develop you into becoming a better version and becoming the highest version of yourself. So kind of just like rewiring yourself because it's easy and pleasurable and comfortable to like scroll on my phone it like rewards and triggers my brain but it's harder for me to sit down no content on and just like write in my journal like that's hard but it's more rewarding so kind of just like keeping that in the back of your mind when you're like going through your life and like setting up systems and habits and routines and so moving into the next part um the way you feel about everything 
is either through the pictures that you make in your head or the words that you say to yourself. So this kind of goes back into mindset. Like this is all kind of the umbrella of mindset. And so this is comforting to me because you can realize that there are that you are the one that's actually in control and the way you react it's about perspective like i talked about last week and we can change or shift our perspectives so really thinking about you know reality is what you make it it's not like predetermined for you it's how you view it so it's like keeping that in mind whenever you're going through a challenge or life isn't like exactly what you want it to be like make it what you want it to be so another um, kind of concept or topic within the mindset is your mind loves familiarity and it's programmed to keep going for what is familiar. So if you want to unlock your potential, you have to make what is familiar unfamiliar and what is unfamiliar familiar. So mindset is the biggest part of unlocking your potential. Believing you are capable is essential to realizing the potential inside you. You are already your ideal self. So number one for unlocking your potential is your mindset so starting at that baseline getting all these like visualizations manifestations writing it down like physically pen to paper writing it down so good really helps to you know move the needle and so the next step in unlocking your potential is actually implementing systems routines and habits so setting up systems in your life that propel you forward they pave the way for you all you have to do is the initial work to set these systems up and then you're just maintaining them until like these certain checkpoints or maintenance points within the system. So it makes your life simpler. It eliminates decisions, reducing decision fatigue. And if you have systems in place that guide you to your ideal self, little thought goes into these routines and habits and they're just becoming a part of your life, a part of who you are, a part of your structure. And going back to your ideal self passage and honing in on the activities, the habits, and the routines of your higher self will give you the inspiration to pull for the systems that you're implementing into your day in life now. So for example, I want to I wanted to become a spin instructor and my higher self, I was writing as myself, like I'm a spin instructor, like I'm teaching a X amount of classes per week. So in order to actually become that higher version of myself, I wanted to, you know, implement systems and routines that would get me to that point. So if I'm a spin instructor, okay, that means I'm a really good like rider. Like I'm really into that. I'm good at making playlists. I'm good at promoting on social media. So that's literally, I wasn't a spin instructor, but I was acting like I was basically. So I was going to spin every day. I was making it a part of my routine and system. I was analyzing their music choices. I would look at their playlists of the instructors. I would analyze their coaching techniques and styles, how they interacted with riders before and after class. And I know this like sounds really creepy, but like you have to do the work. Like you have to do this kind of like creepy, like deep work on something if you want to master it. And so I really was immersing myself into that lifestyle and l trying to learn as much as possible. I was watching YouTube videos of like how to become a spin instructor. Like I was really like going in deep on this and because it was something I really wanted and I was willing to struggle for it. So I knew I was truly passionate about it. And which kind of leads me, you know, all of this like background research, whatever, leads me into the next way that you can unlock your potential, which is through learning. So be, by becoming a student, I feel like you're, that's when I'm really thriving or learning. You know, when I'm a student of something, that's when I feel like my truest form of myself. And so it's my natural tendency to want to be studying or like doing homework. As someone who is no longer in school, I find myself giving myself homework like all the time. Like I love a little project or something that feels like homework. I don't know why, just part of like my natural tendency. So anyways, I think it's a great way to master your interests, your hobbies, to come become the best, become the expert or the master of your expert, of your whatever subject or topic or skill or hobby or whatever it is, because you have, you always have room for growth and can learn so much from the world around you. And I feel like to really unlock your potential, 
you have to be a sponge and absorb this stuff from other people um, who are experts or more experienced than you in this. And then by doing that and gaining more knowledge and experience, you yourself will be able to like unlock your own potential when it comes to this certain thing. And so these are like the three main ways to unlock your potential. Number one, your mindset, which I think is the most important. That's why I spent the most time on it in today's episode. Number two is through your systems that you implement. And number three is through learning and just like being a sponge and just really embracing yourself in whatever world of, you know, whatever specific thing it is that you really want to be a part of yourself, to become your higher self, to unlock your potential. And so I like to view potential as a game and it's like you're constantly going through to unlock new levels and each level before was essential to reaching the next one. So all of the levels are important to this game and the skills or badges or medals or honors that you earn throughout it's not just like at the end, it's like throughout the game that you're learning all these things and earning these things. And that's what leads you to becoming the higher version of yourself. And so I think that um, kind of one last comment or thought I have on the topic is you might notice that I never am mentioning or referring to unlocking your potential as like your full potential because I don't believe that there is such a thing as like unlocking your full potential because I really think it's limitless when it comes to potential. There are no bounds or limits on this thing. It's really, I think, freeing and encouraging to view potential as limitless and boundless because there is no perfect state. There's no final level. There is no, you know, I say a lot of times like becoming the highest version of yourself, but that's like an ever evolving, like getting higher and higher like you're always striving for it but you can never actually touch the highest version it's just like a state it's just like a broad like statement of like unlocking your potential you know becoming the higher version of yourself because you're like always striving to become the higher version and it's really just you know realizing that there is no like final perfect state where i think you're going to be like oh yep i accomplished everything couldn't get any better at anything else like because i just that's not life like nobody's perfect so just kind of like keeping that in mind when you're trying to level up is like there is no final destination or level like you're just always going to be constantly evolving so just keeping that in mind and i like to view it kind of like a game it makes life fun like oop unlocked a new level like spin instructor level check like you know but i'm not it's not like i checked it and it's over because i can always improve i can always become a better one i can you know expand my music taste i can add in new choreo i can challenge my writers i can add in more coaching techniques it's like always a thing like there's always ways to level up your game so i just wanted to share with you guys some of the ways i've personally leveled up and unlocked like bits and pieces of potential like obviously nowhere near like the ideal higher version but the ideal version like your ideal version passage is always going to change it's always going to evolve because you're always changing and evolving and you might want different things you might have different passions you might have different interests or life changes or whatever it might be that like happens that something changes so this is something that i feel like i'm always evolving and like unlocking different levels and potential in myself like i didn't even know we're there which is really cool it's like oh i didn't even know i wanted to do this thing and like here i am doing this thing so all of that to be said i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode and you gained something you can apply to your life actionable advice i am trying to just give you information and i love if it's a conversation you guys let me know like what's something that you're trying to unlock what level you're trying to reach and i would love to hear from you guys so you can comment down below leave a five star rating or review if you're listening on apple or spotify and thanks so much for listening to today's podcast episode it was such a fun one it was very chatty i literally didn't even drink this since the first um like word came out of my mouth but that's all i have for you guys today so thanks so much for listening follow me on instagram at ireland 12 and i love you guys bye